ArcGIS Pro Intelligence, or Pro Intel for short, is designed for intelligence professionals to visualize, explore, and analyze disparate data to produce actionable intelligence. In this video, we'll use tables and charts to explore additional ways to uncover patterns and understand your data. In this project, we have a layer of crimes from 2020 and a layer of crimes from 2018 to 2020, both overlaid on a light gray base map. Opening the attribute table for the 2020 crimes, we have the ability to sort on fields to group information by attribute. Right-clicking on a field name gives us access to the context menu, and then I can sort in descending or ascending order as I'm doing on the offense and the ward fields. I can also create a custom sort. In this example, I'll choose both the ward and the offense fields. Once sorted, for each ward, I'll have an ascending list of offenses. But there are other interesting ways to visualize the data. I'm going to create a chart to break down the crimes by type of offense in each ward, but I'm also interested in grouping the information by shift. To create a chart, I can right-click on the layer in the Contents pane, and in the Context menu, click Create Chart. An empty chart and its properties pane appear. My category will be Ward, and I would like to count up the number of crimes per ward. Now I'll split these bars into shifts by specifying Shift in the Split By dropdown. The bars are split into different shifts. If I prefer to stack the values, I can click on the Series tab in the Chart Properties pane and choose Stacked. If you choose 100% Stacked, the values are distributed proportionally. We'll stay with the Stacked visualization. If my workflow requires me to look at individual types of offenses, I can easily do that by using a definition query to filter the data. In this case, I need to understand the timing of auto theft crimes by shift, so I'll use a definition query to show only auto theft crimes. Both the map and the chart are updated to reflect the filter. To remove the filter, simply go back to the Definition Query dialog and delete it. Next, we'll calculate summary statistics in our Crimes 2020 table based on Ward and Offense. In the table, I'll right-click the Offense field and choose Summarize from the Context menu. For the statistic field, I'll choose Offense and count up the crimes by offense. Then for case fields, we'll break down how many crimes occur by offense in each ward. The summary table is created and now I see the individual types of offenses listed by ward and the number of times they occurred in 2020. Finally, we would like to visualize any existing temporal crime patterns between 2018 and 2020 by creating a data clock. For my Crimes 2018 to 2020 layer, I'll right-click and choose Data Clock from the Create Chart entry in the Context menu. I'll choose Report Date as my date field, and by default the rings are assigned to years and the wedges to months. I can change the classification settings if I wish. Looking at the data clock, I can see a higher concentration of crimes in the summer and early fall for 2018 and 2019, with a sharp decrease at the start of the pandemic in 2020.